Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, aloha and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaborative effort between the Small Business Administration, Hawaii Small Business Development Center Network, the Mink Center for Business, Women's Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center with the University of Hawaii at Hilo uh, and ThinkTech. We're here to talk about small business in Hawaii, uh, talking to small business owners about their business, entrepreneurship, the challenges, what they've had to overcome to succeed in the tough business environment we see in Hawaii. Today, I'd like to welcome the owner of uh, Hank's Cafe, Honolulu, Hank Ta'afa'asa. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's a tough one, but Hank has been here working in Chinatown, running his business in Chinatown for over 20 years. He's starting, well, actually celebrating 20 years, years of business tonight, yeah. tonight, right located in the heart of Chinatown, Nu'uanu, and he's been the favorite neighborhood watering hole for years and years. <laughs> um, Hank, tell me how you got started there and what you've seen uh, in keeping that business going. I mean, your you're kind of 20 years of success yeah. as a small business is a great statistic. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is about um, 18 months prior to me opening Hank's, I was mm -hmm. sitting there, we, we went to one of the celebrations in Chinatown and I was sitting there with a friend of mine and I said, boy, I'd like to have that bar across the street. It was shuttered. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy who was a place, Doug's place and was out of business. And I called a friend of mine, Mike, Michael Hong, and he said, yeah, I mean, that's part of our family and everything else. So that's how I got into it. And as I was having that conversation 18 months before I actually opened the bar, Dave Donnelly walked by. Mm -hmm. And he said, what the heck are you doing as an old friend of mine? And I said, well, I think that, you know, I'd like to have that bar across the street there. <laughs> <laughs> And the day I took possession of the place, the place was a wreck. I mean, uh -huh. cockroaches and everything else running out of it. And I was opening the door, and Dave Donnelly knocks on this door. And he said, I wanted to see who's in there. And, and, and here I am standing. Uh -huh. I said, Dave, do you realize that uh -huh. you were the first guy that I even mentioned this place to? And uh -huh. here he is walking into the place. Uh -huh. But anyway, I opened it as an art gallery. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, I'm an artist. I've been doing it for years. And I was with a couple of galleries. Um, Main galleries don't make any money. I mean, mm -hmm. it's tough for them to stay in, stay in business. So I opened it as an art gallery, but I put the bar in to pay the rent because artists starve, mm -hmm. you know, and the bar took off. Yeah. yeah, and 20 years ago, that was kind of just on the cutting edge or as Chinatown and the, the yeah. transition of Chinatown the was forbidden, really coming The forbidden about. area, uh -huh. you know, on that side of New Ueno. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that the toughest uh, the obstacle I faced when I first opened was getting friends of mine who knew me uh -huh. as a halfway decent person to come <laughs> down to Chinatown because they were afraid to. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, as you can tell, over the last 20 years, a lot of that has changed mm -hmm. for the better. Yes, we've seen a, a tremendous uh, yeah. transition or evolution of that area, and per perhaps some ups and downs. And yeah. you know, for small businesses, yeah. one of the things we hear all the time, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. So you had um, the advantage of coming in where a lot of it, at the time when a lot of mm -hmm. attention in that transition was going on. But what what, what did you do to overcome some of that uh, kind of re reticence that people had for crossing New Anu and getting into the business community down there? You know, um, a friend of mine told me years ago, yeah. You know, he said, to establish a place, you just got to be a pest. So when, <laughs> I, when I first opened up, I, I sent little tidbits of information, however menial they were, to Donnelly, to um, Ben Wood, to mm -hmm. Wayne Arada, and it, to the point that within six months, um, 
Donnelly made the greatest statement. He says, you know, thank God for you because, you know, when we're stuck for space, uh -huh. we've got something to throw in there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and that helped us, really. Everybody says, boy, you're getting all this publicity. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, it's not because it was just so great. It's just that we're, we've been, been used as a lot of filler. Mm -hmm. And that worked for us, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a name in, in the paper, a name, in, you know, so and so that was kind of interesting. You got the word out. Yeah. You got the repetition of your message going yes, along yeah. so and you were persistent in yeah. in getting that info pest. to him yeah. you were a pest yeah. okay i have to remember that be yeah. a pest <laughs> <laughs> but uh and your clientele you kind of uh hit on a niche or did you do that by design by design i wanted to be older uh -huh. as opposed to younger um you know i've seen how the younger groups and the you know the younger audiences are so um fad Mm -hmm. driven um, so we've been fortunate you know mm -hmm. with the growth in Chinatown in that whole area I mean there's 17 18 places now mm -hmm. where there was once four when I was there um, and and the majority of them are catering to the 20 30 year old group mm -hmm. we've maintained um, our niche as it were being mm -hmm. 45 plus mm -hmm. and that's worked for us mm -hmm. and so you're kind of the neighborhood bar yeah. people come in and visit you at the late afternoon end of the day you know we open at um, seven in the morning jay seven in the morning seven in the morning and you'd be surprised. i've never been there that early <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised how many people are there um, uh -huh. yeah and surprise some of the people who are there uh -huh. you know, so, at seven so, in the morning uh -huh. start their day start the routine exactly, and then yes. get on off to whatever else has to happen in the mm -hmm. in the day and um so you have that kind of cheers atmosphere the people know each other they have their favorite bartenders mm -hmm. um but you also have other attractions that come in you have music from time to time yes we have or? music every evening uh-huh and it initially started as an open mic kind of thing. Um, Before karaoke or anything yeah, was really started I, you out. Know, I, went to, I went to the karaoke thing for about a year and a half, and I didn't like it. Uh -huh. you know, first of all, <laughs> not everybody's a good singer. And I mean, okay. you know, and, and there's a, you know they, they pay their dollar. Uh-huh. And you got to listen to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so. they're running your other customers out. Yeah. <laughs> so but I tried the karaoke, but we preferred to stick with the live format. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Okay. Yeah. So, but it kept the the bar kept going. Yes. People kept coming day in day out, and so it was serving its purpose. You enjoyed it. You enjoyed mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. people who were coming mm -hmm. in. I did that. But yes. you were still painting. Yeah. Because that was the that was the original. That was the plan. Yeah, that, exactly. That yeah. Got you started. Yeah. And in fact, I've never stopped painting. And uh, uh huh. You know, so that's tell what us I do. a little bit about that. You know, um, and I know I, you've, I've, you've I've got a big show you're opening now. Uh, today, yeah, uh -huh. this evening. Uh -huh. um, I've always been. I, my mother in, enrolled me at art courses um, when I was in the fourth grade mm -hmm. at the Academy of Arts. Um, you know, and I drew everything as a kid, uh, mm -hmm. just copying Dick Tracy, uh, Terry and the Pirates. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I tell you, if there are parents out there are, whose kids have this, you know, there's nothing like copying the comics mm -hmm. because you kind of learn form and expression and line quality by copying the comics, you mm -hmm. know, and then you get better. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's important yeah. that, you know, if, if a child expresses that kind of interest, mm -hmm. to let them follow that. Exactly. You know, yeah. whether it's comic books or old yeah. art books or whatever. I used to copy, my mom had this beautiful book with prints of Botticelli's. Oh my goodness. It. And I used to draw. Oh. The, you you know, still draw? A little bit, a yeah. little bit. But, you know, my brothers used to look at the pictures for the naked women, but I was copying. <laughs> Botticelli, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty yeah, good-sized girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but comic books was a place to start. Yeah. A different yeah. sense of color and, yeah. and line. And the biggest thing is, yeah, form and color. You know, you learn that if you copy Dick Tracy in the comics, and, you know, and if you remember, Dick Tracy had that jawline mm -hmm. that was so distinctive, and it was easy to draw. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anyway, that, so, that's how I got that, started. So, but you turned that interest or that passion into a business as well. So you are a, yeah. a Hawaii yeah. artist. Yeah. You sell your work, yes. originals and yes. prints yes. and things along that line. Now, and you market them. What has changed dramatically um, for all of us uh, is the internet. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the majority of sales I do come off the internet. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. So um, how do people find you on the internet? Are they looking uh, for My last name dot com. Okay. Yeah, so. So spell that one out. Well, www.taufaasau.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. I think during this program we'll have a chance to show um, a couple of images, too, of mm -hmm. some of the work mm -hmm. that you've Thank done. You, yeah. you work mostly in oils? Or? Primarily in oils. Uh -huh. Primarily in oils. In fact, but it's kind of interesting. Um, um, our other place at Hanks is the Dragon Upstairs. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of it's a nightclub. Uh, when we first opened it 12 years ago, uh, one of the tattoo artists, mm -hmm. we had this old door, mm -hmm. and I had her draw a dragon on it. Well, it was glass, and it got kicked in a number of times, and finally broke down. So we bought a new door. And I just painted a new dragon on it. Oh. But I had to use acrylics because, mm -hmm. you know, oil is very difficult to paint on that situation. So it was, mm -hmm. it was my first um, time working with acrylics, and I was quite impressed because <laughs> it dries so quickly. Uh huh. You know, so, so it's yeah. a different kind of right, result. Right, yeah. And, and you can immediacy. work a lot quicker, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I've been an oil guy forever. Uh huh. You know, and, and printing, printmaking, and so on, but mm -hmm. uh, primarily oils and print. And so. People find you on the website, they look up Hawaii artists, uh, because you are, your style is definitely uh, reflective of Hawaii too. Bold color, yeah. bright color. Um, and as we were talking earlier, um, you kind of developed some new, new marketing strategies and producing work as well. Yeah. Um, but you've got your Chinatown series, now yeah. the new new series that you're introducing tonight as yeah. part of your 20th anniversary celebration is... Namele Hula. Namele Hula. So tell us a little bit Relationship about Relationship uh, between um, Hula and music. Mm -hmm. You know, the dance and music, the traditional Hawaiian dance and music. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so... And you, you're dealing with... Um, Themes or storylines too with some of the paintings. Pretty, I've, I've, pretty I mean, much. I've noticed some of them yeah. on your website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like uh, one of them. One of them. You know, that I. One of the uh, paintings that I did send uh, to the people here uh, has a Loa Tower in the back, mm -hmm. and it remind and it reminded me of growing up in Kalihi from Aleva Heights and looking looking out and that was the most prominent landmark at the time. Oh my goodness. You know, you can't see Aloha Tower from Aleva Heights anymore. Uh -huh. But uh, Kilda Beamer wrote um, Honolulu City Lights mm -hmm. and you know and he and he talks about seeing Honolulu the city of Honolulu from mm -hmm. Aleva Heights. Uh -huh. yeah, and that's uh -huh. and consequently that's why in that painting there's a you know, in the background is Aloha Tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a so, lovely painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Thank um, you. so many of them are evocative of <clears throat> of wonderful stories and a different time as well. But the I mean you capture in the color and the sense of motion so much of what yeah. we think of yeah. as. Thank and, you, yeah. and so they're they're lovely. I recommend that people come out to see them, mm -hmm. uh, and take or take a look on the website. Yeah. So Thank you. you know, but uh, yeah, there'll be more to come, and I think we're going for a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk a little bit more about how you stay alive in Chinatown for <laughs> 20 years, beating the odds, beating the statistics, and marketing. Uh, your your changing business down there as well. So mm -hmm. we'll yeah, be right that's back. Yeah, that, that part is important. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood.
Thanks for joining us again after our break. We're here with uh, Adventures in Small Business, and we're talking with Hank Taafa. Uh, it's a hard one for me, I'm sorry. Um, the owner of Hank's Cafe Honolulu and a local Hawaii artist um, with some great works uh, to see both on his website and at the, the show that he's opening at Hank's Cafe today as part of his 20th anniversary celebration. So we've been talking about what, what his business is about, how he got started, and some of the changes that he's seen as Chinatown has changed and evolved. So um, 20 years in business is a, is a good track record. We're talking a little bit about what that means to sustain that business, some of the changes that have gone through, have happened, and uh, um, what have you seen as some of the challenges you've overcome or some of the most important things that you've learned? I mean, lessons learned or surprises? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, when, I first, when I first got into the business, I never attended bar. Uh -huh. um, and in fact, um, I'm a bit shy, you know, so mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not the most garrulous guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you, when you own a bar and you put up all this money that you have, you got to change your ways, you know. So, you know, I got to be, you know, a lot more public <laughs> with uh -huh. some of the things that I do, <laughs> because you have to. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy who helped us out, the guy by the name of George Lee, when we first opened up, he taught all of us new newbies about bartending, but he said one thing. He said, when somebody walks in your bar, greet them. Mm -hmm. He said, the worst situation is for a new person to come into a bar where they don't belong and they feel completely alienated and not even and ignored. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, and, and we do that, and we do that faithfully. And in fact, you know, this new guy that you know, was taking over for me, he runs the bar and he's a lot more impersonal than some of the people he's hired. And he's hired a couple of younger people, so they're not really comfortable about an older audience. Uh -huh. And I went to this one guy and I said, listen, this guy walked in and nobody has said anything. You've got to, you just got to grab him and say hello, mm -hmm. I'll be right with you or something. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, Hank, that changed my whole <laughs> attitude oh. about bartending. Uh -huh. But he said, beyond that, it increased my tips. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a, that's, that's why you're there. You know, there's to make a, a positive dollar. reinforcement yeah. exactly, for that yeah. good customer service. But it, yeah, I never forgot that. And I see, you know, so we do that also. A guy walks in, we've never seen him before. Hey, how you doing? I'll be right with you. Or what mm -hmm. can I get you? Mm -hmm. You know, and then introduce them to the people sitting at the bar because mm -hmm. then they become part of it and they may, they may come back. Yeah. Well, your space yeah. is not that no, huge not at all, space. Yeah. So, so it does have your in close proximity to yeah. the other customers. You do get to know them. Uh, and if you're different. isolated, that's even more. You can't hide. Mm -hmm. you know, that's so, true. You know. So, but uh, but yeah, business is tough. Business, you, know, you learn. It, I tell you the truth, Jane. It was great when I just had Hanks. Mm -hmm. Twelve years ago, I opened the Dragon upstairs. Uh huh. And then it got to be a real job, mm -hmm. you know, so, which was okay. Because Hanks know. is open during the day, yes. and the Dragon upstairs opens. It's just a club at night. At night, yes. So. And it, we initially started uh, doing just jazz, mm -hmm. um, and that, I that, yeah, that. Yeah, that worked well for me. Mm -hmm. The problem is we had trouble selling a beer after 11 o'clock because the people who like jazz mm -hmm. are my age, and I mean, they're ready to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, and what, what James has done, you know, this new person who's taken over, mm -hmm. he's kept that jazz format earlier. But after 11 o'clock, he has DJs in there. Oh, okay. and, and that works well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, you know, our customer base is... Um, for those people who come up to you and they give you six credit cards and tell you use the one that's working tonight. Oh, <laughs> there's a different yeah. approach. So uh -huh. I mean, and that's kind of what you see. So it's a whole different thing, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's worked well for the bottom line. Mm -hmm. You know, for James and you know James who's buying it. So thank God, you know, he's mm -hmm. opened up a whole new um, uh, front for business. And so he's know, he's yeah. kept transitioning your yes, your yeah, business yeah. to adjust to the he, new yeah, market. He, he has been there. running the business now for the last five or six years. It lets you paint more often. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I go down there. I know, I'm now the I'm now the janitor. Mm -hmm. You know, and the handyman, which is fine for me. Yeah. And the dragon upstairs, um, they have their own bar facility yeah, upstairs the now. The whole or? thing is self-contained. Self-contained upstairs, own, so yeah. it can be a different group than what's downstairs. Yes. 
No. Completely you, different, by the way. Do you rent that out? No, we no, used no. to do that We, we still do. I mean, oh. we're, we're, we're dark on Sundays, and, okay. you know, every so often we um, rent things out. Okay. Because I know, you know that as that came on online yeah. upstairs, you it, were trying some different business models yeah. with it as well. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to toot my horn for a second. In 2011, if, if you could Google the Dragon Upstairs mm -hmm. and the New York Times, and, you know, we were... Um, where there's an article about you know weekend in Honolulu uh -huh. and they selected uh, the dragon as the club but you know it was two paragraphs with a picture uh -huh. <laughs> and I sent that patch to every bar owner in Hawaii <laughs> <laughs> and I said this isn't the Kauai Times oh, yeah. That, yeah. so yeah it's and it's still online the, uh, yeah the dragon upstairs great. in the New York Times so, wonderful yeah, lucky us congratulations yeah. so we were talking to, I mean, there's something to toot your horn. It's a measure of success, mm. too, that kind of recognition. But how else do you measure success? Success is staying in business. I mean, okay. for the mom and pop operations like ourselves, you know, we've got 12, at most 12 employees. Mm -hmm. The majority of them are part time. They have other jobs or, or, or they're retired or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, staying in business so that your people know that. Um, whatever money they can make, they can depend on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so easy to say staying in business not, not always, doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. it, means, it means like five or six years ago when we went through such a terrible downturn, I mean, you know, we didn't take any money out of it, uh -huh. know, but we never missed a paycheck. You know, mm -hmm. and that's important. That's important. Yeah. So you're also being reliable for your employees. Yes, of that's course, a very, yeah. very important yeah. uh, thing to see happening. Yeah. Uh, be able to come to come to work, rely on that paycheck, yeah. and know that you're you're being taken care of. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that, that employees for a small business is always a big step, and particularly now with the unemployment rate the mm -hmm. way it is. Keeping those employees can yeah. be quite challenging too. So yeah, and I and I, you know I mentioned the part-time employees. Um, you know we've got maybe three or four full-time employees, which yeah. are great. But you know it always it, I, I'm happy that we provide um, a mother, you know, or a grandma, in in you know, you know, an extra four or five hundred dollars a month or so, mm -hmm. um, you know, for her life. Uh huh. You know, that kind of thing, that yeah. gives her a little bit yes. different quality of life and just maybe yeah. a little bit more In fact, she security. said to me a couple of years ago when I first, you know, she was working at City Mill part-time, and um, she said, you know, Hank, this is the first Christmas. I didn't have to charge any of my Christmas gifts. And I thought, well, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good start. That's you know? good, yeah. yeah. We were watching on uh, Hawaii News Now this morning talking about credit card debt and how oh, yeah. much people typ typically carry mm -hmm. and how it balloons at Christmas as well. So yeah. those are important things to give you a little financial security. Yeah. And so, um, I'll tell you what I want to talk about, Jane, mm -hmm. because you're SBA. Mm -hmm. But the SBA had a lot to do um, with me. Mm -hmm. When I built that upstairs, um, you know, they came up with sixty thousand dollars for me, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that everyone knows, you know, how <laughs> <laughs> how it works. Yeah, I mean, it it, 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 it takes quite a bit of paperwork, um, mm -hmm. you know, in this day and age. Right. Um, but I would not have been able to build the upstairs mm -hmm. and run it, you know, and establish it for the first year mm -hmm. without that sixty thousand dollar loan. Mm -hmm. I must, I must tell you that yeah. you you don't know this, but I paid the loan back within a year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. SBA. That's where we met. Yeah. yeah. So um, and there was for for a while when SBA had the center across the right. street, working with some of our resource partners. The SBDC was there, and we were seeing a lot of people come through at that point in time. Mm. And and that is how we met. Mm. Uh, and you know, kind of got you engaged in the SBA uh, yeah. guaranteed loan process. Yeah. So it was. The, the paperwork, the process. So what happens if, if I didn't pay it? This, well, the, do you guys, the government has to pay it? Well, the, basically, it would the servicing for an SBA guaranteed loan goes with the bank you're working with. And mm. if they determine that you couldn't pay it back, um, they would ask SBA to pay them, pay down or the, pay off the guarantee, mm. whatever percentage you didn't pay. But they are required to take all the necessary collection action Prior with you that. before we pay on the guarantee. So, and one of the things that you know most people don't want to do is not 
repay a government loan. Exactly. So we try to work with the bank and work with the borrower so that we don't need to take any assets because they will look to liquidate. So your bank could have, if you, if your your uh, expansion hadn't been successful, the bank could have taken, you know, the dragon upstairs or whatever. <laughs> Good you know, luck. You know. <laughs> Let them try and run yeah. that, you yeah. know. But uh, I, I'm glad to hear that it was a good experience. Well, it worked after, for me. It, it, gave, it gave me the uh, peace of mind mm -hmm. to have cash flow. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. I think, one of the things we discussed, too, yeah. is important for a small business oh. owner to have that so you can remain loyal to yeah. your employees, make the payroll, make your payments, yeah. and things along that yeah, line. Yeah, you so. got to have money in the bank. I, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's, it's amazing how, you know, I know a couple of new rebar owners over, uh -huh. the, over the last 20 years who haven't lasted. And, the, and to me, the biggest problem they had was they took a lot of the money out of their operating capital for themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's okay. really simple. Uh -huh. so you know, you eat less. See money coming yeah. in yeah. And, and, and saying, "Okay." And I'm here goes flushed. a new new car. Uh huh. And I, you know, the one guy. I mean, who's not back? He's not here anymore. He and his friend. He he bought a, a Corvette for his boyfriend mm -hmm. and a Cadillac for himself. And he'd not been in business a year. Oh, okay. And I yeah. said to him, I said. <laughs> and indeed, he lost the business. Uh -huh. So yeah. your advice to a newer small business owner is to Drive keep your old car. And, <laughs> and put your money yeah. back into your business. Yes, exactly. Be conservative yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. And that's going to help them continue and succeed for 20, 20 years. Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's really simple. You cannot get paid if you don't have extra money. <laughs> right. You know, and, and that's where they make the biggest mistake, in my okay. opinion. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to be wrapping it all up, but I want to um, congratulate you on 20 Thank years you. and uh, recommend to everybody to head on down to Hank's Cafe Honolulu on New Uanu and check out 20 years of success and the great artwork. Enjoy that spirit of Hawaii. Thanks for joining us for Adventures in Small Business. Thank you, Hank. Thank you.